Coming right up, a special edition of Straight Talk on the International Facilities Management Association, better known as IFMA. Our guest tonight, Tony Keene, President and CEO of IFMA, and Michael Feldman, Deputy Executive Director of Los Angeles World Airports, as we continue our 21st anniversary year. Closed captioning provided by Scan Health Plan. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. <laughs> Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We have a great show for you tonight focused on IFMA, the International Facilities Management Association. Our first guest is Tony Keene, who is the president and CEO of IFMA. Tony, welcome to Straight Talk. Thank you, Art. Tell our audience what IFMA is all about. Well, IFMA is, as you know, is facilities management, and we have uh, over 23,000 members worldwide in 85 different countries. And we have local branches uh, that help service those members and meet those members' needs, and we have 130 of those, as well as 17 specific councils that focus on different industries and dealing with some of the issues that facility management really brings to the table. So you, you're the guys that make the buildings work, and uh, you're invisible in a sense, but uh, when things go wrong, uh, they call you. Yes. Um, as I like to say is that our, our profession of facility management and our industry is we're masters of the invisible <laughs> because um, when things are working well, you never really think about what's going on in terms of facility management. But when you are you know, in a, a store and the escalator doesn't work, then all of a sudden you're saying, well, why doesn't it work? And now I've got to find an elevator or take the stairs. So there's a lot of reasons that facility management is the invisible, but such a critical component of today's society. Well, most people really don't think about it for the reasons you've just indicated. And I know until I got uh, a little more involved in this all, when I heard of FM, I thought of a radio station. <laughs> but this, this is a growing field, and we'll be talking about it more uh, a little later in the show. But uh, uh, give our viewers a sense of, of the dimensions of facilities management. It's not just keeping the lights on and the water running. Now, facility management is really a strategic integrator of business services to really create an experience for the occupant or the worker of any type of facility. And we think of facilities, uh, it's a very generic term and general term. I mean, it can be an office building, it could be a casino, it could be a retail environment, it could be your convention center. I mean, there's everything that we look and interact with on a day-to-day -day basis is a facility of some form or another. And how that facility is taken care of, how it's operated, and how it's integrated into the overall business strategy of that organization is critical to the success and the happiness of the people that are working there. I mean, one of the, uh, the key aspects of facility management is the ability to really impact productivity in an organization, especially in a for-profit or a non-profit environment, where if you bring together the right pieces, you can actually enhance and increase your workplace productivity, which obviously will then drive better uh, either strategic alignment or bottom line profitability. And for most businesses, uh, of course, the biggest single cost is people and personnel, but the second biggest cost in most cases is real estate. Right. And see, this is where facility management really can be a, a key strategic component of the organization because it's also, it has the ability to impact those people as well as has the operations responsibility to help manage that cost of the building, whether it be energy or water. And what we find is that facility management in this day and age, in terms of sustainable initiatives, uh, that they really are at the center point to be able to implement those initiatives to really make sure that we're maximizing the utilization of our energy that's out there and our limited resources. Now you have 23,000 uh, members throughout the world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in, in, mo in many or most organizations, is the FM person high up uh, in the food chain in the organization or is he or she down below? Can, can you get the organization to adapt some of these enlightened policies? Well, what we find is our membership, it really is all broad across the spectrum. I mean, we have members that are very, very high levels in their organization, as well as members that are, are you know, 
basically middle management or below in terms of uh, what they do in terms of facility management. Uh, there's very, very, it's a broad profession and a broad industry in terms of the types of services that it requires and the skill sets that it requires. So we like to say that we have a profession that really is for everybody, no matter what your education level or what your skill level is, there's a piece of facility management for you. Now, I understand that many of the people now in place who are acting as facilities managers came from some other field and kind of drifted into it or got into it. They weren't trained and educated as facilities managers. And I think your organization is trying to, to professionalize this field. Absolutely. I mean, one of our, you know, we're a nonprofit organization, so one of our purposes in life is to really increase the awareness of facility management and raise that level of the profession overall. And we were able to do that through offering certified facility management certifications, as well as what we call a facility management professional designation, and also a sustainable facility professional designation. When these are all educational related courses, to try and make sure that our facility facilities across the world are really being operated at a high level. In addition, what IFMA does is we put out conferences and networking opportunities, whether it be on the local level or global level, uh, to allow our FM professionals to be able to interact, to solve problems, share best practices, so then that way that we can share and, and actually all benefit from the knowledge that comes out of IFMA. So even if the facilities manager wasn't trained in that field through his or her education, they can get on the job training and of course get certification Absolutely. through your organization. And, and you know what we're looking for are passionate people that um, you know really desire being busy constantly and doing multiple things. I mean we have some of our members are going from uh, you know figuring out how to buy a corporate jet to uh, you know fixing the flood that just happened in the building and the manufacturing compliant. So it's a, it's a variety of tasks and it has to be somebody who likes to do that and juggle a lot of balls in the air. But the reality is it's a growing profession and that it's an area that if somebody's out there looking for a career, it, this is a great career to have and there's you know, almost guaranteed jobs. There's a tremendous demand for trained facilities managers today, right? Absolutely. And you know, what we look at is that you know, in the area of facility management, Every industry has its kind of unique uh, aspects to it. So yeah. we offer a lot of different opportunities and different skill levels. I mean, you can come in it from a, an architectural design or construction background. You can come into a facility manager from an engineering background or even a business background. Um, and you, it's not college degree is not always required for all types of jobs inside of facility management. And yet these are good paying jobs Absolutely. for which there is a huge demand. So take note if you know someone who is... Uh, uh, a young man or woman who's thinking of a career or even someone in mid-career that may want to make a choice or change. In the next segment, we'll be joined by Michael Feldman. And you probably never thought of an airport as having a facilities manager, but uh, LAX and others sure do. Stay with us. Supported by Edison International. Californians are getting to be old hands at year-round energy conservation, part of our special awareness of the resources we all depend on. We're making the change to energy-efficient light bulbs, keeping warm weather thermostats set to a comfortable 78 degrees, and giving major appliances the afternoon off. Because when it comes to energy conservation, it all adds up. Life, powered by Edison. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives. We're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com, the port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks. Hello, I'm Jessica Hardy, a proud Long Beach native and a member of the USA Swimming national team. Having spent much of my life in water, I've developed a deep appreciation for the valuable role that this precious resource plays in our lives. In recent years, California's water supply has become unreliable. To address this reality, Long Beach residents have dramatically reduced their water use through permanent lifestyle changes. In doing so, Long Beach has made itself a leader in water conservation. As I work hard to achieve my personal goal of qualifying for the 2012 Summer Olympics, 
I encourage you to continue your tremendous efforts to use water in smart and responsible ways. So join me and your fellow Long Beach residents in strengthening the water conservation movement. By making small but significant changes in our water use habits, together we can ensure that we have a reliable water supply for many generations to come.